Okay, we're also joined by our winner of the Federated Auto Parts 400, Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11 FedEx Ground Toyota. Denny, certainly a big weekend for you, starting from the pole and winning here in front of your hometown crowd. If you could just talk a little bit about what this win means to you, as well as your momentum heading into the chase. Yeah, it uh, definitely was a great night. Um, you know, we ran the top three all day and uh, just got our car right when it really counted the, the last 200 laps or so. So um, this is a great uh, great win for us. Um, you know, it just gives us three extra points, and we'll go into uh, Chicago with a fresh slate and uh, obviously try to ride this momentum all the way to Homestead. Okay, we'll open it up for questions for Denny. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Okay, we'll start here in the back and then come up to Matt. Mark Davis, NBC 12 in Richmond. Denny, congratulations. I, what goes through your mind in a race with all these cautions, with two laps to go, another yellow flag comes out. What goes through your mind there, you know, when that happens? And at that point, pretty confident you can hang on and, and have a good restart and go for the win. Yeah, I mean, it... Uh... I mean, I, I was literally counting the seconds down, knowing that, you know, I needed, okay, 20 more seconds, 15 more seconds until, you know, just get to the white, and I, I was going to be fine. And I saw smoke up ahead and uh, knew there was an issue. But uh, I definitely didn't want to see it because I knew that w with the shortage of tires that uh, it was just going to be interesting to see how it played out. I thought for sure we were going to have to come pit, uh, but he knew uh, how many cars we had that was going to stay out behind us and the buffer that we were going to have and, and made the right call there. So I've really never seen old tires win a race in a green-white checkered. Um, but uh, it was just enough because obviously Larson got all the way to second. So um, just a great restart. I think that was key for us is, is to get to into turn one cleared and, and, and you know, did everything we needed to do to, to win the race. So glad we didn't let it slip away. It would have definitely hurt to lose this one uh, on the final restart if we would have. Okay, next question from Matt and then to Jeff. <clears throat> Matt Weaver, AutoWeekRacer.com. Uh, heading into the chase this year, this is the third year with the elimination format, and the first two years have kind of taken on a Wild West, Bowman Gray-like mentality. One, do you expect that to continue? And two, do you think that sort of uh, intensity and drama is good for the growth of the sport? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, I mean, Rex is a part of NASCAR. It's always been part of it for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're getting down to the last race of the regular season. Some guys, you know, have a care factor that's really low right now. And, and so um, I, I think that uh, it's just part of that. But I think that the chase, I think things get a little bit tamer in the chase because people are aware of, you know, the chase cars. And whether they say so or not, they, they definitely race – a little bit more careful around those guys, uh, especially when you're, you know, not racing for a win. So I don't foresee it going much further, but I think as guys get eliminated, uh, it, it could definitely ramp back up again. Okay, next question from Jeff, and then we'll go up to the press box. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. I think Toyota's ended up winning half the regular season races, so you guys look pretty dominant. Who's going to stop you and how? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think that any one of these guys can, can get going. You know, you don't know what they've got at the shop waiting to, to come to the racetrack so I think it's really hard to predict what happens from from this point on I mean is it a continuation of the regular season or has somebody been laying in the weeds I mean I think that uh, obviously Larson's really stepped up uh, the, the, his game over the last uh, month or so um, so I, I don't know I mean I, obviously the four cars got a, a great speed week in week out uh, so he's definitely going to be a challenger no doubt about it uh, the 42, and uh, you just don't know. I mean, that 24 went on a run in the, for about a month as well. Um, so, like I say, until you get get to Chicago, look at practice, look at how the first race goes, that's kind of, to me, the barometer of where, where we're really at. And Any additional questions downstairs? Okay, we'll go over to Bob. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. <laughs> I assume since you're active on Twitter that you saw Harvick's tweet earlier in the week of the bull that he, he tweeted that his mood was that of a, this bull, you know, running through a crowd. Is, can, is that what it takes to win the chase or does it depend on kind of the driver and how they approach it? Um, well, in, in order to be the bull, you have to be behind someone. So I, I'd rather just be out front and fast, you know, all the time. So um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, 
you know, there's times to be aggressive and there's times to, to have the mentality uh, to, to be aggressive and just bull your way through. But but ultimately, you know, in, in our sport nowadays, it seems like, you know, if you, if you bump into a guy, you know, you expect to get bumped or wrecked, you know, right back. So I just think this is a, you know, a NASCAR of retaliation, it seems like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really ramped up over the last few years. So I'm not sure that, you know, just, you know, bullying through cars or anything is, is, is you know, the, the right way to, 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 to win a championship. But, uh, you know, those guys got enough speed that, uh, you know, at Darlington, they, uh, they didn't need to do much. They were, they were, they had the field cover. So um, it, it's, it's several different ways to win it. We've seen a lot of different champions do it a lot of different ways. Um, and, and we'll just see how it all plays out. But, uh, you know, I like our chances at this point. Okay, we'll take our next question from Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, Denny, I don't know if it was happenstance or what, but the tire management situation tonight becoming such a big deal is that is that maybe stumbling onto something like would it make sense to have fewer sets and have that be part of the race regardless? Um, I don't know. Um, the, the purest in me says no, but the excitement maybe says yes. Um, I know in Xfinity, Xfinity, I mean, you know, tire man, you know, they, they reduce those guys to a lot, and the, and the racing's not really any better. So um, I think eventually, you know, when, when teams know that they're short, um, they're all going to play it nearly the same way. When, you know, this race kind of caught people off guard because they realized halfway, oh, goodness, we're, we're going to be short. So, you know, I think it just showed at the end, with all those little sprints and then cautions, sprints and cautions, I think it was kind of a unique race where, yeah, those guys came into the front. But I think if you just shorten the tires, you're going to see, you know, really the racing is not going to change that much at all, uh, to be honest with you.